It's time to get educated on your Second Amendment right. Welcome to two full hours of Gun Owners Radio. Your hosts, Dave Stahl, Joe Dramisi, and Michael Schwartz will teach you about firearms, self-defense, and the laws that affect your rights to keep and bear arms. Visit GunOwnersRadio.com with questions to learn how to become a sponsor of Gun Owners Radio and get involved. Together, we will win. Now, here's your hosts, Dave Stahl, Joe Dramisi, and Michael Schwartz on The Answer San Diego. All right, folks, welcome to Gun Owners Radio. AM 1170. Stop it. Why? Say the answer. Oh, right. You have said the answer. Just say the answer. The answer. Nice. Perfect. Way better than you. So anyway, hey, folks, uh, that's our guest. We'll explain her to you later. Uh, do you feel safe? Yeah. Are you protected? Well, it's time to take ownership of your self-defense journey. The U.S. Concealed Carry Association believes the key ingredient uh, to being a responsibly firearms owner is proper training education. So USCCA offers comprehensive training that helps you avoid danger while keeping you and your loved ones safe. More than 650,000 responsibly armed Americans like you have made the responsible decision to take control of protecting themselves and their families. Get hands-on training from certified instructors, learn how to avoid danger, defend yourself, and protect your loved ones. Take responsibility for your own safety and visit uscca.com backslash G-O-R. How's it going, boss? Good, man. How are you? Living the dream. Went out and took a look at the country from Kentucky to uh, all the way across the United States. Okay, so you flew to Kentucky. And drove back. And drove four back. four days. And what did you drive in? 2022 Ford Maverick Hybrid. A Ford Maverick. But you know what? Ford was- Maverick? It was comfortable. We got 36 miles per gallon. But My here, grandmother had an old Ford Maverick. Oh, this in the is 70s. a truck. It's a, Which, oh, it's a truck. Yeah, it's a pickup. But you know what the bad thing about it is? What? So I told my guy I was riding with, I go, you know, we need to kind of break this in since it's brand new. Yeah. And we did put 2,300 miles on it. Yeah. So it started in Kentucky at 36 miles per gallon. And when we got to San Diego, it only has 33 miles per gallon. Hmm. Well, you broke it in. You just, maybe you just it. broke it. Yeah, we broke it. Now, so. did you hit Bourbon County? Or yes. Did, you, not, did yes. you? We went to uh, uh, Beale Street, went to B.B. King's, went to the uh, the uh, Martin Luther King um, um you know, hotel, motel that he was shot and killed at. Oh, my God. We went to the Corvette uh, Museum where all the Corvettes fell in the sinkhole. We went to Fort Knox, and I told them I was coming back after leaving, mm. and they laughed. I would never say that. They'd think I was AWOL. Yeah. And just had the time of our lives awesome. driving across the United States. It was just. Did you go to a distillery? Uh, yes, we did. Would you, do you remember the distillery? Uh, you went to? Uh, Dominic. Yeah, how was it? And I bought a shirt that is for a girl, so I looked totally stupid in it. So I had to give that to my wife. <laughs> yeah. But I did get a bottle, a two or two. Oh. But uh, yeah, thanks. But, but there was Thank no, you. there were no tasting <clears throat> rooms on the bottom of any of the signage in Kentucky and mm. and Arkansas. And That's weird. I didn't know that. I wonder why. Probably because they were dry counties. <laughs> But they well, make but it. Bourbon, yeah, but I thought there was like a deal. Like you can go take like tours. Or I don't know how that works. Well, they had tours, but you know we were looking for the tasting. Room, I see, but we never. It did. wasn't quite like that. Huh? But you know what? If if you you know, I mean, God bless all you folks who want to go to Europe and Australia. Go see the U.S. of A. Man, I'm telling you. Yeah, I'm with you. It is awesome. I yeah, ate like a horse. I had the best time. The greatest people. Did you go to a Bucky's? I absolutely went to a Bucky's. <laughs> if anybody knows, I went to a Bucky's. I bought a shirt. I, I mean, you know, I was a typical tourist, man. Let me tell you, that's awesome. And I was looking for the alien out in the desert. You know how the sign says, yeah. "Turn around, and go back." You miss the alien. I miss the alien. You miss the alien. I don't know. So how you been? How'd you? Uh, how'd your week go? Good. It was awesome. Uh, we have a special guest. Yeah, here who is today. this lovely lady? Alicia Curtin. How are you? I'm Hi, good. Thank you. Hi, Alicia. Thank you for so, uh, being on the show. We're going to interview her uh, down the road, but she's a, an instructor at uh, Discount Gun Mart, right? Correct. Oh, okay, good. We That's great. That's fantastic. Yeah, it was funny because taking this trip cross country, you know, of course, I've always promoted, you know, Gun Owners Radio and San Diego County Gun Owners, and they looked at me and they go, you're from where? Yeah. Yeah, know. yeah it's like we have a disease if we're from California. And then, of course, you get that, I don't want to see none of your, you know, what coming. I don't do that. <laughs> no, I'm not a. I'm not a tourist guide. I'm yeah. just driving through the state, you know. Yeah. But and everybody just, you know, 
the minute you mention you're from California, I mean, they give you a double take like you're a looney tune. Like, yeah, what well. are you people doing? So a couple things I want to mention uh, uh, about yeah. CCWs, everybody. A couple of announcements, the things that have been coming in. Good news or bad news? Um, Just news. Okay. Um, one, Well, one's good. The other's kind of neutral. But I uh, wanted to reaffirm to everybody, if you are applying for your CCW, you no longer have to give proof of good cause. You don't right. have to do a proof or a uh, good cause statement. You don't have to provide proof of good cause. Right. In the little box in the application, write N-A. So where they ask, hey, why do you want your CCW? Normally, you'd write your, your 13 sentences, your uh, Okay, can your I ask a question? Statement. Just write N-A, not applicable. Do you know anybody that wrote N-A? And got a CCW. Well, it, so it hasn't it hit not yet, but this is. But you know I'm not I'm drawing. I'm not just guessing. I'm we like we work with the sheriff's department. <laughs> we I like sat with the under sheriff Kelly Martinez. This has all been worked out. the The attorney general said, "Hey, you no longer have to do um, uh, good cause," and the attorney general is as anti gun as they come. Okay. So this isn't. I'm not guessing. I'm not suggesting. This is absolutely right. as. Because uh, you know, I'm skeptical. Here. I know, but uh, they've got memos that's up on their website. It's come down from Attorney General. I've talked to the undersheriff. This is as positive as positive gets. That's the first thing. The second thing is if you've – so those are, that's for people who don't have their CCW yet. Mm-hmm. People who do have your CCW and you've had it you know, within the, about the last 10 years – and you were a part of the the data breach. Um, make sure. Oh yeah. So actually, I've been getting a lot of questions. People get their their uh, letter and they say, "Hey, should I take advantage of the credit monitoring that they're offering for free?" My opinion is no. Don't don't give them any more information. Don't trust them in any way. I would not take their credit monitoring. I would not sign anything. Uh, check out somebody else. Check out some other credit monitoring. Uh, LifeLock is probably the most popular. Uh, I, I'm not endorsing LifeLock. Check it out and see if it works for you. Um, but they're certainly one of the you know the biggest, uh, most reputable. I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Is there another? Alicia, I, I, you think you know another one? No. I can't think of another one. But uh, I would do your own credit monitoring. It's something like ten, fifteen, twenty bucks a month, something like that. Worth every penny. Yeah. Don't go with the state's recommendation. Don't take their free shenanigans. Um, not happy with them at all. So uh, w- I wanted to get those two things out there and make sure, because we're getting a lot of feedback, a lot of people. Our CCW uh, seminars that we do, um, you know, we're telling everybody, yep, just put N-A. You don't have to do good cause. You don't have to do proof of good cause. Mm-hmm. And it's all because of the Bruin case, the Bruin right. Supreme Court case. Right. So, are you, Alicia, are you guys getting a lot of inquiries down at this A lot of inquiries, correct. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Constantly, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, we just we in fact I just did uh, I did two CCW seminars in a row at Discount Gun Mart last week. So, um, so yeah, it's it's and they still it's let exciting. you back. And they still let me back, and I got to tell you, the everybody listening, the line is long. A thousand plus people since the decision came out. A thousand plus people have signed up to get their CCW. Wow. So. Mr. Opportunity to have a short line. Everybody's, uh, yeah. you know, but uh, we've but been that's okay as long. I mean, uh, eventually that line will will I would hope you know thin out. Yeah, a it is. Bit. The, the sheriff's department's working on it, but really the the holdup is the California Department of Justice. Everything goes has to go through them. It has to make a stop through California DOJ. The fingerprinting is they have like I think they have like two people or something ridiculous. So that's the big bottle. Well, okay. Well, then now I feel better because I figure there's got to be a way for them to try to slow this down. And you just brought it up, so that makes perfect that, yeah, sense. Yeah, you know, and how much how much do they care? How much the folks in Sacramento care right. about uh, you know speeding it up? Right. Now, the they only don't. other thing is the folks that process the fingerprints for CCW folks are also the folks that process the fingerprints for uh, new uh, police officers. And my understanding is pl- it's taking a long time for law enforcement to get hired. For the same problem, so hopefully they'll they'll fi- hopefully they'll fix it for that reason. They actually have people going to apply for a job as a police officer. I know, right? These this in this day and age, I don't think so. All tough, right, hey, we're already gonna... a tough job. Totally. Rick Ector hosts Legally Armed in Detroit, a completely free event for women interested in learning how to safely handle, load, and operate a semi-automatic handgun. The most recent event had almost 2,000 attendees. Was he able to break his personal record? Find out next. But first, if you have legal matters that involve firearms, then you need to call California firearms lawyer John Dillon. If you have questions about red flag laws, gun registration, gun transportation, or maybe you just need to know that your guns are California compliant, call our trusted firearms 
attorney, John Dillon. John Dillon specializes in California gun laws. Call 760-642-7150. Or you can visit his website at DillonLawGP.com. As we said, Rick, Actor hosts a program that he came up with called Legally Armed in Detroit. And uh, just had a huge event, so we wanted to have him come on the air and talk to us a little bit about what he's doing in Detroit. Rick, how you doing? Hey, man, I am great. First and foremost, let me thank you all for having me on the show, man. Good to be here. Yeah, thanks for coming on the show. So, um, so let's let's just let's talk about your background a little bit. You're, are you born and raised in Detroit, or native Detroiter, man? I wow. lived my entire <laughs> life here, except for that one year. I believe it was like third grade, I attended Howard Rusa Elementary in Evansville, Indiana. But besides that, native, <laughs> lifelong Detroit resident. Oh, wow. That's cool. Now, what do you, what do you, what's your day job? What do you do in Detroit? Well, I'm a firearms instructor, man. First okay, cool. Foremost. Nice. And uh, I uh, teach interested citizens on how to take on a more active role in their personal protection. And uh, you know what? I had my own uh, face-to-face brush with danger about 15 years ago. Got robbed in my driveway at gunpoint, and uh, it sort of put everything on a different trajectory. Now I'm a firearms instructor, and get this. I give away free shooting lessons to interested women. That's awesome. I, would, wow. I want to talk about that. We, want, we especially want to go over that in the next segment. But first, I really, I really want to talk a little bit about you and your business and Hi, that's a very interesting backstory. Now, did you were you were you that's what got you into being a firearms instructor is being held up in your well, in your driveway? Well, actually, it was a journey in of itself, man. I uh, had owned a uh, 12 gauge shotgun that I had in the house for personal protection and self-defense. Had no dreams of carrying a pistol outside the home, even though Michigan had recently, you know, at, at that point had gone shall issue, even though it took a whole year to approve your application. But uh, when I got robbed, man, I just got immersed in uh, personal protection and learning everything I could. And once I reached the saturation point, I uh, turned to instruction, not because I wanted to teach, but because I thought that learning something that firearms instructors knew might give me a little edge as a Regular, just go to work and uh, fend for myself, citizen. Okay, so you're in your driveway. What are you doing? Go, going to your car, coming out of your car? Coming out of my car. I was uh, coming home from work. Mm-hmm. I pulled into my garage and I uh, was, I don't know, probably looking around, putting things, you know, in their proper place. You ever take a look in your garage from time to time? Sure. So anyway, I uh, locked the car in the garage and was coming out. It's a detached to, uh, to my home. And as I stepped out, man, two guys are standing there, and uh, one of them produced a handgun and announced a robbery. Wow, that must have been terrifying. Uh, it wasn't, uh, you know, a great moment, but, uh, you know, any number of things could have happened. I'm luckily, luckily for me, at the end of the day, I wasn't shot and killed. And uh, So what did they want? Did they want money, or what did they want? They wanted cash. They wanted money, anything that I had of value. I mean, they took a watch, uh, my wallet, all of my identification, you know, anything that I had on myself that was of value. They didn't take my wedding band, though. But, Mm. uh, you know, they had some interesting ideas of of what we should do once they discovered that their haul was only 40 bucks. But, uh, Mm. you know, luckily for me, I uh, used common sense and didn't oblige them with some of their ridiculous requests. So I'm guessing they they got away. You never saw these folks again, never found, never prosecuted? No, I don't have an official closure on the story. Like uh, like my description led to suspects being arrested and me being able to pick them out of a lineup and them being prosecuted. Nope. I don't have a nice TV story ending right. for you. But okay, so at gunpoint and uh, it changed the trajectory of my life. It uh it, it moved me from just owning a 12 gauge shotgun at home to yeah. exploring more options for personal protection, immersed myself in anything I could find. And eventually I turned to firearm, being a firearm instructor. Wow. I had no idea that I'd be an instructor one day, but uh, I just started racking up uh, certifications, man. 
And so did you, okay, so after that all happened, called the cops or you just kind of let it go or, or I'm assuming yeah, you at I least called, called the, the cops. cops. Yeah. I went, I went through the whole thing, man. Yeah. I called the cops and uh, they came out and, you know, and then I uh, met, I had an appointment with a sketch artist, you know, and they did their best for my hazy, yeah. you know, recollections and trying to put together a, a profile, a physical representation a picture that looked like the dudes that robbed me man but uh and then no. were, you, were you married at the time at the time i was and, so did, uh, you, did you sit down and that was there a was there like a conversation like hey hon I, you know i this really kind of shook me I, I think i need to get a pistol or how did all that go well i mean at the time she uh she was like uh dead set against it you know like i'm sure there are a lot of men out there across america who are entertaining this thought of introducing a pistol into the home and, and getting a carry permit. And some of those uh, relationships, the, the man loses that discussion and he acquiesces to her anti-gun sentiment. Me and myself, you know, I took the vantage point that I could very easily be planted in the ground at, at a cemetery somewhere and uh, people might miss me for a few weeks or maybe in a, a month, but eventually life will go on and people will start to forget about you. But, that'll uh, be that. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and that'll be that. And I don't want to sound, you know, cold, but I mean, realistically, that's what we're talking about. Just think about people that you've known that have gone on. I mean, you know, you feel really bad right around when it happens, but eventually, man, they sort of just disappear from your life. So you made the decision to get a gun. Did you, you know, would you, I'm assuming it, it sounds like you weren't, you know, you had a shotgun for protection, but it didn't sound like you were like going to the range and like that. You weren't like in gun culture when you told your no, friends. I wasn't. Not at all, man. It was yeah. like the furthest thing from my mind. I mean, I lived in a decent neighborhood, yeah. you know, a decent job. I mean, I'm a regular guy, man, or at least as I understand a regular guy to be. I, I got up, I uh, went to work every day. I came home from work. So when you told your friends things that happened in the house at, while I was away from work, wash, rinse, and repeat. You yeah. Know? And when you, you know, told your friends, "Hey, I'm getting a pistol," was it, what, did you get a response? You know, what was it like? Did you get negativity? Did you get people were supportive, or how? How did? What was it like? It was it was a mixed bag, man. Some people were, you know, okay, yeah, that sounds like a cool thing to do, and then some people were like, well, you know, ah, you're just going to make the situation worse. You know, there's going to be. You know, now another person with a gun, kind of like what you hear from certain uh, left leaning politicians when they get on these different shows preaching against gun ownership and exercising your right to carry, man. But uh, you know what? I know what it's like to be on the wrong end of a handgun, man, in your yeah. face. And uh, I was undeterred from my experience. And I was resolute that if that situation ever happened again, that I would have more of a say in the ending. <laughs> that's a good way of putting Very it. Very good. You're laughing. I am so serious. Yeah, no, I, that's a good way. Of, I'm, I'm just laughing. That's a that's a creative and accurate way of putting it. Um, that could be a T-shirt. Yeah, really. <laughs> so, you know, and it's, I, I get it. It's, you know, there's all this rhetoric. You know, when nothing's going on, there's all this political rhetoric, you know, and they talk about, you know, they, the other side, the anti-gun side, they throw out these statistics and you're more likely to be blah, 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 blah. But when when you know when it when the stuff hits the fan, all that rhetoric falls away. All, all that malarkey falls away. People know that a firearm is the most effective self defense tool ever created. And and if there's a problem, you know, if there's a serious problem and people want uh, to defend themselves, they know they want to be the ones with the firearm. You know, you know in, a, in, a, in, a, in an interesting way, I must confess, man. Looking back on it now, paradoxically, I'm glad it happened. I'm glad that I'm no longer walking around with my head in the clouds, you know, Pollyannish, thinking that nothing negative or bad could ever happen to me. And, uh, you know, Joey Blue Skies, you know, I'm just thinking <laughs> that it's a beautiful place out here. And uh, I had a dose of reality and I had a, a lot of ground to catch up and what I perceived to be a short period of time, and I made up the ground as diligently as I could. And, uh, man, it has been an interesting journey. Well, now, you talked about politics a little bit, and Detroit tends to be uh, left-leaning, and Michigan in general is a little bit of a battleground state. There's some, you know, they'll have some left years, some some right years, some Republican years, some Democrat years, but they it's not an anti-gun state i mean it, it's in a lot of ways a very blue state and detroit's definitely a blue city 
Um, but it's not necessarily an anti-gun state. Am I am I wrong? Or tell me a little bit, a little bit about that. Man, you know what? Th- there are a lot of people in this world and in this immediate community, right, right in Detroit proper, and immediately after. You know, there are some people that have varying Im- levels of importance that they attach to gun ownership. Mm. Here's the thing: many people that I know have come cro- have come across who live in my community and my neighborhood. They own guns. I mean, Democrats own guns too. I mean, just like people who are not Democrats own guns. It's just the relative importance that they place on gun ownership when they step into a voter booth, depending on what particular ideology that they follow or charismatic personality that best uh, reaches them politically. But the vast majority of people I come in across, you know, they have guns. It's just some of that other stuff is more important to them. But Having been on the wrong end of a firearm in my backyard, I place a very high degree of desire to having the ability to have a firearm and preserving that into the future, not only for myself for the rest of my days, but for anyone else out there that may have an epiphany and decide that they want to embrace their God-given right to own a firearm. Well, and Detroit is, I I don't know the reality, I've never been to Detroit, but the you know the reputation Detroit has it's a it's a fairly dangerous city frankly um it, it's I it's mean, high crime like, don't miss any words it's a lot of crime here a lot of violent crime here and uh, you know what many crimes don't actually make it on TV because they're not sensational enough but something really bad happens to somebody on a regular basis around here yeah so having a gun is pretty important. I think it's important. <laughs> it sounds like you do. I, I don't. Let me tell you, I don't leave the house without a gun. There you go. All right. Well, All right, hey. we're going to have you on in the next segment here. We're going to talk about your program now that we've gotten your background. All right. So don't. All right. Hey, do you have jewelry that you don't wear anymore? Maybe a watch that's just gathering dust, or maybe it just doesn't work. Well, what if you went to Leo Hamels and sold it? You could use the cash to get a gun, or maybe take the pistol class you've been waiting to do. Well, when you sell your used jewelry or watches to Leo Hamill, not only do you get the best deal in town, you're also supporting the Second Amendment advocate. One of the easiest ways to support the Second Amendment is to support our partners like Leo Hamill. Call 619-299-1500 or you can go to his uh, showroom right there on San Diego Avenue in Old Town and always get awesome service at Leo's. Find them online at leohamill.com. So we're talking to Rick Ector, who's in Detroit. He's a firearms instructor, and he has a lot of really cool uh, events and programs and training that he does. And we just heard his background story. And Rick, fascinating, um, really, uh, really interesting the way that you 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 got into a firearms instructor. Now, honestly, I think it's 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 probably the best way. You know, um, there are a lot of people that that go into firearms instruction through law enforcement or former military that sort of thing. But the fact that you were face to face with the real purpose and need, and that inspired you not only to defend yourself but to help others, I think that's an extremely cool story. Man, let me tell you, I wish I had been more forward thinking, more more committed to this idea of personal protection when this idea first uh, entered my head. But mm-hmm. uh, you know what? Through life experiences serendipity things happen man and you find yourself right where you should be so tell us about legally armed in detroit yeah it's a uh, gun rights advocacy site i run here in uh, detroit man to uh inform people about personal protection you know Mm -hmm. various solutions if only to increase your level of awareness personal protection and how to be more safe man and uh i saw a local news story uh, approximately 11 years ago about a woman's body that was discovered just laying on the street. She had been sexually assaulted and killed and just discarded like trash. And unfortunately, you know, there have been repeated incidents similar to this where a woman's body is just found, you know, discarded in the alley or in a dumpster after she had been raped and killed. But back to that initial, you know, incident that I, that I referenced, I, uh, I thought about it, you know, off and on for a while, man. And uh, I was wondering if there was something that somebody could do to help, you know? Yeah. And uh, eventually I settled upon the idea 
of offering women a free firearms training. You know, I would just get a gun range, negotiate, you know, to get the place for free. I would pay for the ammunition. I let them use my gun, get a few fellow friends and firearms instructors that four other guys helped me out. And we would just go on social media, man, and try to get the word out as best we could that if a woman was interested in learning about guns, you know, you meet us at the gun range and we'll give you a briefing and we'll let you shoot our guns. We'll have the ammo and all the safety equipment. And then you can make your mind up if this was something that you wanted to pursue. And uh, we trained 50 women that first iteration, man. Nice. And uh, see, I get that response from a lot of people like, yeah, <laughs> nice. But yeah. see, the way my head works, man, I wanted 200 or 300 people to yeah. come out that day. Yeah, I know. So, I'm with you on that. That happens to me all the time. We'll have an event, and I'll, I'll say, "Gosh, if, if you know, I, I hope we get X amount of people at this event." Right. And if we get it, I go, "Man, I wish we had like ten more. If we just had ten more, <laughs> never satisfied." I can totally relate to you, Rick. I know how you feel. And that first one where you had fifty was eleven years ago. Is that right? That was eleven years ago, man. And uh, I just stuck at it. Just kept at it. You know, a uh, good friend of mine. Actually, he was more of a mentor back in those days. Uh, Ken Blanchard, blackmanwithagun.com, if you heard of him. Yep. But uh, he implored me to continue. Man. He said, hey, follow this road, see how far it goes. And I kept pushing, and we just kept growing. Like 50 became 100, 200, 400, 600, uh, 800. And how, and how many did you have this year? Uh, this year, we just had, just last weekend, we had 1,200, you know. We, wow, wow. This year, you, know, you see, and then here you guys going like, wow, that's a lot of women to train in two days, right? Well, see, a couple of years before that, I had 1,900 plus. Wow. So, right. So, since then, a lot of things have happened, right? Everything has come back online. So, yeah. having it at that time of year in August when the uh, Dream Cruise happens here, where everyone pulls out their classic cars and stuff. People are doing stuff, you know, and then this year, you know, for whatever reason, this big uh, news agency, you know, that that distributes press releases, they felt that uh, my press release wasn't, I guess, in the public interest, so Mm -hmm. they didn't run it. So I had to do a lot of local podcasts and local radio and TV shows to get, you know, the word out as to when we were having it, and uh, we were able to... uh, about 1200 man and well how do you let me ask you talk about the logistics if you have 1900 women how many like how does that work how do you how do you train 1900 women in two days how big's the man, venue look, and how many people a lot, a lot of help man first you <laughs> need facilities you need gun ranges to allow you to do it and of course you can't have 1900 people all show up at the same time you have to create a different schedule a online registration process spread them all throughout each day for two days. You have to have a lot of qualified trained people who are firearms instructors, rain safety officers. You need donors to let you use their guns. You need people to donate ammunition, uh, earplugs. So so, so is it, is it, is it it more, is it, Okay, so there's more than one It's a range. full-time job. Yeah, it sounds like there's more than one range involved, or, or, or is it all in one? We, we, the last couple of years, we've had two gun ranges going simultaneously at two different locations for two days straight. Wow. Okay, so a woman shows up, and what does she get? What actually happens? What's her experience? Her experience is she signs in, she registers, she gets an e-ticket, she shows it, she goes in. We have a generalized informational session. You know, called a range briefing where mm-hmm. they're taught fundamental firearm safety, you know, uh, shooting stances, some basics that you need to be a safe handler of a firearm, and a general overview on marksmanship on how to get good results on your target. Once they do that, they paired up and matched up with a vetted, credentialed, real life firearms instructor one on one in the booth, mm-hmm. and they shoot 20 rounds of 9 millimeter ammo at a target. And then we take the target down, we take pictures, and, man, look at all the smiles we create. That's amazing. That's very cool, man. I, well, thank I, you. Whether, you. whether it's one or 1,900, that's an amazing thing to do, Rick. That's awesome. By the way, you have a goal. I have a goal? What's my goal? 1,900. 1,900. How many do you do? 
Well, we do. Uh, we have a couple of different <laughs> programs. We do. We have our shooting social, which is this sounds more similar to the shooting social. Yeah. And then we have our women's but program. You, do you ever get nineteen hundred in a setting? Not in a setting. No. Well, I'm saying you. Good man, give this guy some challenges. <laughs> well, I don't know if we. I don't know if I can. I don't even. I'm, 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 like, <laughs> I don't even know how you can the do that. The logistics. I don't even know how you, how that happens. Wait a minute. Guess, he has you friends. Know what, see, see, you just don't start out at nineteen hundred. Nah. You start out with a dream of nineteen hundred. You get fifty, and as you as you go and as you grow, you start to encounter snags, and then you resolve those snags that inhibit your growth, and you just keep pushing. The next thing you know. It's what, man, it's it's eleven years later and you're training people by the thousands, you know. Right. Hey, hey Rick, don't don't let this guy kid you, okay? He started out with San Diego County gun owners. We had what, ten, fifteen people to join. Yeah. And you know, with thirty people. Yeah, and he says, Boy, if I could just get forty. Oh my <laughs> gosh, if I could just get fifty. And how many do you have today? We're we're at about about thirty three hundred members. Now, See? So and and it's that. just like what you're doing, Rick. But he's not letting them shoot. No, we, what he's just know? taking their money. That's, <laughs> That's all he's true. doing. We do education. So the uh, so it's is it one time a year? That's one day you guys do all. Yeah, and I, I do it. I do it just or one weekend, year, I should say. But you know what? There have been like clamors and and folks who are just dying to to replicate and duplicate this program. Yeah. At a time, I was thinking about. You know, just doing a traveling caravan. No, I think the solution I'm settled upon, man, is to duplicate myself in other places by right. teaching other people how to do it. And you know what? Probably come up with a, a, a weekend out of the year where we do it all simultaneously in unison. That'd be cool. Just have a great American shoot off. Well, you guys are so much on the same plane, except. He could be a part of San Diego County gun owners because we got San Diego County gun owners. We got Inland County gun owners. We got Riverside County gun owners. We're working on L.A. County gun owners. And it's just like what you're doing, Rick. It's one baby step at a time. And to get an organization that can do what you're doing, just like what Mike's doing with his organizations, that's the key. So you're going to make it. I, I I have no doubt well, you're not yeah, going to make it. And are they all, are there, it's all women? All women participants. I mean, here's the thing, man. That's that's what inspired this incident. And here's the, they are the preferred target victims yeah. of bad guys, especially yeah. those who, who are into rape. You know, and and this unfortunately in the story I originally re referenced as the genesis of this program, not only raped you but killed you. You know, so, right at the end. Ooh. Well, it's definitely. I've talked about this before, but that's one thing I, I definitely learned. Uh, uh, from my wife was women live in a very different world than men live in Alicia. Don't I, you know, when I, when, when I walk out the door, we're in the same world, but the, 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 the threats that, that I have to deal with and the threats that women have to deal with are very, very different. Correct. And I, I just, I, it's, it's something I had to learn, you know, and the, the things that they have to put up with on a, you know, on a kind of a trivial, you know, basis, very different than the things I have to put up with. But it's those threats that are so different. I don't understand. I, I don't understand why every woman in the world isn't isn't pro Second Amendment, pro gun, carrying, having a CCW. Well, I think they're just afraid. Wouldn't you say, Alicia? I agree. I, they, they don't have a, a really great understanding, and they don't even know what they're fearful of. And right. once they great, once they gain that knowledge, that fear tends to go away. They only know that if they walk outside or after work or out of a grocery store, you know, they're constantly nervous until they get in the car and lock the car up. But they don't know what to do about it. Because right. nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to do like what Rick's doing and like what Not Me SD is doing. So, you know, we in the in the industry uh, just has to keep fighting every single day along with, you know, San Diego Gun Mart. You know, you guys work on a daily basis to get people, you know, interested. And it's not, and I, I'm sure, Rick, you understand it too. It's not just women. There's men out there scared half to death. To go yeah, out alone. But then, you know what? And you know what? I get calls from guys like, yeah. how come you're not doing this for guys? And I'm like, look, man, because uh, you're a guy. I mean, they're women. <laughs> they, they need it more. I mean, yeah. if, so if how do people help? And you, and you want to learn how to shoot a gun, go learn how to shoot yeah. a gun. Yeah. How yeah. do people help? How do people find you? How do people help? Do you have a website or tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely, man. Uh, my blog is legallyarmedindetroit.com. I'm on all the major social media sites. I can't keep up with the billion that are out there. But if you look for Rick Ector, Detroit CCW, you'll find me on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, 
I mean, you name it, I'm out there. Look for me. You can't miss me. All right, buddy. Hey, it's always good uh, talking to you. Keep up the good fight. And trust me, I'll get Mike up to 1900. It's, it'll only take another week. <laughs> Alicia Curtin from Discount Gun Mart. Hey. Next. But first, do you ever wish cleaning your guns was easy? Well, you can clean, lube, and protect your guns with CL1. CL1 CLP Plus is natural, non toxic, and environmentally friendly. You can clean your guns easier and faster, and you'll also smell better too. One and done with CL1. Ask for it by name at your local gun shop or get some on their website at CL1.com. That's CL1.number1.com. Okay, so our special guest we've already uh, talked to a little bit is Alicia from Discount Gun Mart. How are you? Hi, good. How are you? Thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. What did you think of that last segment? He's wonderful. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, you know, one thing I, I'm curious, I'm thinking now, I wish I would have thought of it at the time, is I'm curious what his profession was before he was a firearms instructor. I get the feeling he's successful in whatever he attempts to yeah. do. Yeah, he had he's a good a he had a good mm-hmm. way to present him. He make a good instructor. He could have been a school teacher. He could have been whatever. Right. Yeah. He had a good gift for gab as he did we should have him back i, I want to now i want to keep tabs rich found him rich always finds the most interesting folks and uh but i thought it was really interesting i think it's, it's fantastic that he focuses in on women right now you're a firearms instructor correct well how long have you been a firearms instructor uh going on two years awesome Total. Well, what got you into it you know, it's kind of funny i i grew up i did not grow up on firearms never touched one never saw one just saw it in movies mm-hmm. I ended up marrying uh, a, a man who was in law enforcement, mm-hmm. and um, within a year or two of being married, he took me out because he says, you know, it's a, it's on my hip, it's going to be in the house, you need to, you know, have you know, get to know how to use it. And so we did. We went to the range once, and uh, after that, anytime I wanted to go back, I enjoyed it. And each, yeah. each time I wanted to go after that, you know, for him, it's work. And so it was kind of often, you know, well, you know, not today, maybe tomorrow, yeah. you know, maybe later, you know, it just was not something that he was excited to go back and do. Yeah. And so I just kind of gave up. And then about... Gosh, I'd say about 15 years ago, a good friend of mine was given a firearm for Christmas. And she grew up hunting, but she didn't know pistols. And so she asked if I wanted to go because she didn't want to go by herself. And um, I I knew not a whole lot either, but I'm always up for something new. So I was like, yeah, sure. So I went. And from there, it was just a, it opened my eyes to what I didn't know. And so we took some classes. And I trained, I've, and I've trained over the years with some wonderful people. And I've taken class after class. I've taken every opportunity that I could to train under whoever I could get my hands on. And, um, and I've, I've, I've tried to take everything that I've learned from all those training opportunities. And I've tried to then impart that to, to people that I work with now. Mm-hmm. And um, I just found that I had a passion for it. And uh, I love it. And I love sharing it with people um, who need it. What was your most memorable training? Who, who, who did you like the best? Or what did you learn? Or what's something that sticks out? You know, something that sticks out to me is I worked with um, with Armitage Tactical. I worked with Clint Armitage, up at Armitage Armitage Tactical. Mm-hmm. He um, he was actually putting on a uh, filming and producing a TV program that ended up not getting picked up, so it never aired. But I, I interviewed for that, and I was taken. I was accepted, and uh, I made it onto the program. And it was it, the premise was they wanted civilians with no formal tactical training, but were considered very safe. So basically, intermediate or or better um, shooters. Um, who were ready to be challenged and very safe while doing it. And it was a week-long filming. So your family was never into guns. Correct. Now you are. Correct. What are they saying? Um, they, they're, they're proud of me. You know, and, and they, awesome. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Are, are they from shooting Pedro? yet? Are they, are your, are your, is your family shooting yet? Uh, my children are. My, my children. But not your mom and dad? No. Or, nah, no. Yeah. Are you no. from San Diego? I am born and bred here. Yes. Born and raised in San Diego. Correct. One of the one of the you're you're the one. <laughs> <I'm> one. <laughs> so I mean, San Diego isn't exactly known for it, you know, gun culture. Correct. I think we're we're bringing it back. I think we are trying to get it known for for more gun culture, and I think we're doing Correct. a great job. I'm very proud of that. But not a lot of shooting going on when you were a kid, right? Correct. None. None. In San Diego. Except well, for maybe Simon and Simon, the the the, the set of Simon BB and guns Simon. In the backyard. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, if your family's not into it, <laughs> mm-hmm. then there's never a reason. I mean, you would never be no exposed exp- to it. Correct. I had no exposure until you married your husband, who happened to unleash the animal, <laughs> and now just go shoot, go away. <laughs> I don't want to do it anymore. Right? Well, now that's what we go do on dates. You know, now 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 that uh, now that we're in a different place, and uh, and I want to go, and he's like, well, you know, can I go with you? You know, uh, so yeah. Uh, uh, Nice. Uh, yeah, maybe you could teach him something. Maybe. And yeah. you're a teacher. So you're a teacher, right? That's your b- before you were a firearms instructor. 
You're a school teacher. Background correct. In teaching. I, correct. I correct. I teach. I teach with uh, charter children, charter kids. Correct. Wow. And I homeschool my own. You still do it? I do once a week. So it's very part time. What year? Uh, I do all grades, grades three through twelve. So it's okay. it's laid up much like a college schedule, and then gotcha. every hour different classes. Gotcha. So this is teaching. So you already right. have the skill of teaching, and then you just married that with the new topic. knowledge of yeah, that's awesome. Huh? Correct. So you already had the passion. You already had the skill set. New subject, boom, different and a, and different a, students. Yeah, and a, and a student is a student no matter what the age. Exactly. And as long as they're hungry to learn, then your job is somewhat easy. Absolutely. How oh, cool. So what kind of students do you have? Tell me, well, like, your typical, or is there a typical, is there a typical firearm student? So there's not, but I am seeing a, a trend of a more common student that I'm getting more frequently than I, than I did prior. Um, we're getting uh, quite a few people that are new to firearms that were, you know, and they will admit that they were very liberal anti-gun before. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you know, whether it be, um, you know, the, the riots in the area, um, just seeing the, the world changing with COVID, whatever it may be, you know, whatever the reason is, that, that things are changing and their eyes are being opened and and they're seeing that maybe they need this thing that they feared before. And so they come and n- they purchase and then they realize and acknowledge that they don't know what they're doing with it. Right. And so then they will book um, book a class with someone like me. And Well, when fear comes into mm-hmm. your life and you don't know what to do about it, you don't have a lot of alternatives. I Correct. mean, you could take karate, you could take kung fu, you know, you can do all of that. Correct. But the ultimate is guns, as long as you're trained. And so I think that's why we're seeing this influx of people. How many how many students would you say you, you train a month? So I train a month. Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> that many, huh? Well, you, you know. You blow I, Rick out of the water? Oh. <laughs> uh, I, yeah. I should start keeping a tally. Uh, you know, I, I'm by appointment only. So when people book me, I'm there. And wow. if I open my schedule up, then I am booked pretty solid going right. out for, for a decent amount of time. So, Are they students or relationships? I mean, do you actually bond with these people? I, do. I mean, come on, you're, 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 you're getting into their inner, inner sanctum, so to speak, and taking the fears away right. from gun ownership. And I think once you do that, now it's a bond. It's not... A Correct. student teacher thing. Correct. It's not just me feeding them the information that right. they need. They do. Right. They do tend to to feed back and to to let me know the reason that they're there because that's a big part of the training. Is it's not just hey here's the gun. This is what you do with it. Is mm-hmm. what is your goal? What is your purpose? Yeah. What what are you Why looking are you for? Here? Right. And so and of course that's gonna they're gonna get into their story and what they're there for. Wow. What? Uh, where do you start? Well, after so after you've determined where do you, where do you start with the training after you determine okay this is why this person's here mm-hmm. this is where you know wh- where where do you usually start what's what's the what do you find is is the the place that most people need to ten begin? push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, initially, so I just, you know, kind of assess their needs, whether, you know, are they looking to, to get their CCW? Is this a home defense gun? Is this, are they looking to compete? Are they looking for just a fun range gun, you know, hobbyist, somebody with friends? Um, we kind of start there and then we kind of um, pick out a, a number of things that might meet their needs. And then we start with the basics. We, I, I start first thing before we get hands on any firearms at all is we go over the firearm safety rules, make sure that they understand that. And that they they know what to do and what not to do, and then and then I want to get the farm in their hands and show them hands on. I can talk all day, but I want them to learn hands on so that they can equate what I'm saying with what they're doing. And so we get in there and we we learn. I tell I, I teach them about the mechanics behind the farm, not just hey this is your slide and you press this slide lock up to make it stay back. Well, what like what's happening? I will I will disassemble and field strip the farm and show them. You know how does that slide lock manipulate? You know when you insert an empty mag, why does your slide stay to the rear? So kind of understand the mechanics of gun and when they start to understand that you know the fear of is it going to go off by itself you know is it you know all these things that that people that don't know fear they start to understand the mechanics of how it works so i spend some time teaching them not only you know that you trigger press and and it it goes bang i teach them how and why and then how that that process happens okay so here's something i like to ask instructors after we get get to know them a little bit Mm -hmm. a little little lightning round okay Okay. ready Uh yeah so um, (laughs) you've been here an hour so (laughs) so you're done (laughs) So, uh, Weaver or Isosceles? Oh, Weaver. Well, modified. modified. All right. All right. What are you talking about? Not for Weaver. people that don't it's, know. It's, a, it's the it, two different kinds of stances. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's always a big argument. Everybody gets makes mm-hmm. a mountain out of molehill. Um, nine millimeter or forty five. Ooh. The world's moving to nine, so I guess I'll go with the, the nine. Glock or nineteen eleven? Oh. No. Ooh. <laughs> you know that's a hard one. So. I don't own a 1911 yet. All right. But I want one. So I want to yeah. see a 1911, but I, I've been thus far a Glock girl. 
I, you know, most Glock people want to learn or mm-hmm. want to own a 1911, you know, eventually. Right. Yeah. But I teach them. I, I, I can, uh, I teach people to shoot them. I shoot them. I just don't own one own myself, one. but a- I have, I have desire. I want one. AK or AR? AR. I, I think that, that debate is like long. <laughs> done, I don't think, right? yeah. I don't think she yeah. answered quick enough. I know. <laughs> like AR is just one. The AK guys, you guys just lost. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. It's over. Is that like beta versus VHS? It's <laughs> it kind of is, kind of is, but uh, so. yeah. So uh, those are those are all the big, uh, you know. Those are as big in the gun world as you know, uh, Kirk or Picard is in the Star Trek world, you know, and uh, equally as important. Right <laughs> now, do you train through discount? I do. You don't do it separately yourself. I I can and I have. Well, if you want to, if you want private one on one, then you can do that as well. Correct. Okay. Right. Absolutely. Very good. But go to discount. Dis- didn't discount's been great. Well, We're actually having of our course. meeting at discount. We're having our meeting there. Our monthly meeting in August is mm-hmm. discount gun market. Right. Well, um, I think it's so 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 important, and there's still that massive fear out there because I talk to people all the time. Because to be honest with you, we I always pitch SD, not me SD. Mm-hmm. And I, I tell people all the time, and I like when I leave here tonight, I'm going to go get my Italian food and take it home to the wife. And I'll talk to the waitresses and I'll say, have you signed up yet? Mm-hmm. And they know I'm coming and I'll be there at 630. So let's see if they have an answer for me because I will ask. Because right. I want everybody to be protected. You, you know, Because the more guns we get in good people's hands, the less chance the bad guys are going to come because now they don't know what's going to be at the other end of that. Hey, Alicia Curtin's from Discount Gun Mart right here, and she's coming up next. But first, you know, a lot of the companies are so frustrated with their website. It looks old, it's out of date, and it's not getting any customers. Well, guess what? Sage Tree figured it out. And since 2005, Sage Tree has been helping companies with websites that look great, work great, and get leads. Stop being frustrated by your website and get one that you're proud to share. Contact Sage Tree today to get a website that makes the phones ring. Getting started is super easy. Call 866-728-9100. That's 866-728-9100. And get your website fixed today. So we're talking to Alicia, firearms instructor from Discount Gun Mart. And uh, you're also involved with A Girl and a Gun? Correct. Yes, there's a there's a team of four of us that run the San Diego chapter. There's chapters all, all across the United States, um, and the one locally here in San Diego is run by a, a team of four of us. Oh, no, I, I didn't know that. Was it yeah. was it, is Judy on the team? Judy has taken a step back. She's still oh, involved, yeah. but she's not running it. Who are the four point. ladies? There's you, Dakota, myself, Dakota. Karen, and Sue. Karen and Sue. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Now, what it, what it, what does it mean to run it? Like, what do you guys do? Uh, we just simply. Uh, just oversee. Um, there's we we start the meetings. Um, it's essentially a growing gun. For those who don't know, is a shooting social club for women, um, and uh, we we just start each of the meetings with a, a, a general safety brief. Uh, so, you know, talk about the course of the fire, whatever it may be that's applicable to that meeting. There's mm-hmm. a different topic every month, and uh, you know, we we take turns, we rotate, we instruct, we uh, we inst- uh, we teach, and then we watch them on the line. We are so just kind of as feeling as needed to make sure we safe, having a great time, and learning all that they need to know. Nice. So it's an opportunity for them to meet each other and talk and learn how to, I I know you guys had like a gun cleaning session. Correct. We'll do little workshops. Little workshops to teach people how to get their CCWs and that sort of thing. Absolutely. Very cool group. Yep. That's awesome that you're involved. Why is it important for you to be involved? Uh, you know, I, well, like what we talked before, I just have a passion for teaching. I have a, you know, I, um, I just have a heart for, for helping people in teaching and I, I really enjoy it. And I enjoy seeing people learn and, and seeing their face light up and just to teach them something new, especially something as important as firearms. Um, not only is it um, critical and, and crucial for, for safety, but for self-defense and um, just empowerment and knowledge. You it's know, for, for like 20 years, they've been saying, I keep hearing that, you know, women is, it's the. You know, that's the fastest growing segment of the shooting, blah, 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 blah. It is. This year really feels like it. Last two, three years really, really feels like it. I mean, it seems like, you know, when we have our shooting socials, um, you know, when I go to a girl and a gun meeting, when I see you guys meeting, mm-hmm. it's, they're full, full of women. Correct. Um, it's, it's, it, they've been saying it for years. I was skeptical, but I think the last two, three years, I, it, it's true. It's really, really true. Well, Alicia, what, what do you think it is? Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. What do you think it is? Because do you think it's just because you guys just keep pounding on it and pounding on it? And you're in the media. You're talking to radio shows. 
you know, if you think, and then word of mouth is getting out or they're getting more and more scared of walking the streets. I think it's a little bit of everything, um, you know, and, and when women, you know, especially through the word of mouth, when women learn that there's an opportunity that they have to come and to learn, um, that they don't have to feel intimidated. It's okay to be new. It's okay to not know. And it's okay to think that, you know, that you have, might have silly questions. Those things are okay. And uh, we're a safe place for them to come and to learn. We don't expect them to know anything. Mm -hmm. And so that's what, we're there, what we are there for. Because how are you going to know until someone shows you? And so we are here to teach them and to show them and to and just to kind of get them into the world and immersed and to, to know what they need to know. And I think they want to be trained by another woman. Correct. And that, that is for a lot of them it is. Yeah. You know, they feel safer. They feel more comfortable. They figure you understand why they're doing what they're doing more so than a guy would. And not only that, that's very true. And not only that, but, but coming from a woman, um, you know, uh, all the training experience that I have, I learned, I've trained from all men. I've actually had no instructors that were female that I've learned from. And I will tell you that um, when it comes to training with men, men are wonderful. I love, I love, you know, I have no bias either way. But the body mechanics for a woman are a little different for a man. Your center of balance and right. gravity are a little bit different. When you talk about stance, you know, I've had a lot of men that just simply tell you to well, lean forward, lean forward, lean forward. It doesn't always work that way for a woman. And so having someone that understands that, that can kind of teach the nuances of what you need for stance and to be successful and comfortable, it can make a difference. And so that's something that, uh, that I'm able to give. What do you think the differences are with teaching a man versus teaching a woman? Women listen a little better. That's that's a fact. That's a <laughs> bona fide so the men, fact. The men come in. They I find that they come in Rawr. with yeah, pretty much. I know everything. I can teach Just you. Just give everything. me that gun and let me shoot let it. Let me shoot it. That's and that. the women are a little bit more intimidated. And and through that through that apprehensive um, demeanor that they have, they listen because they're a little bit more unsure of what they're doing. So they take it all in and they listen very well. And they want to make sure that they're doing it right. And so they, they take all that information in and they follow it step by step. A lot of men tend to look at the big picture and just hear the general yeah. general broad Buzz. broad topic of what was talked yeah. about and think that they're applying it. Right. Well, and, and let's face it, that's why women make better employees, you know, because they learn the task you're asking them to do. The guy might eventually get there, mm -hmm. but he's kind of a bull in a china closet when he walks through the front door. Especially when he needs directions. Yeah, 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 we don't do directions. No, no, the other no. big difference I've noticed, somebody told me he was a soccer coach, and he, he coached uh, adults uh, soccer, men men's teams and women's teams. And he told me, he said, you know, if I go in like at halftime and I say, look, you guys need to play better defense, all the women go, oh, he's only talking about me. He's not talking about anybody else, you know. And if you say it to men, all the men go, well, I'm not talking not about me. me. I'm playing defense. <laughs> it's everybody else. And that, you know, the way that I've noticed that translates that uh, translates to uh, when I'm working with men or women, when I'm teaching first time shooters, because um, I'm only good enough to teach first time shooters. I'm not, you know, I, I teach a ton of first time shooters. Um, and I've noticed that if w with a woman, if I say, oh, that's awesome, you did a really good job, like no matter what, no matter where they hit on the target, mm -hmm. that's awesome, you did a really good job. They, they get excited and they do better. Right. With men, if I say, hey, that's awesome, you do a good job, they get sloppy. You know, they go, well, I got this. No problem. They get sloppy and they never hit the target again. Conversely, if I tell the guy, if he's not doing a good, I'm like, come on, man. What do you, you know. What do Don't you interest it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, that kind of thing. Ooh, did you hear that? You know, like, hey, why don't you pull that gun out of your purse? Then they get better. If you do that with a woman, if you're just like, oh, come on, you know, concentrate more, whatever, mm -hmm. they check out. They shut down. They're done. No, that's a that's a huge blanket statement. Doesn't apply to everybody. So, But, but isn't that but what it, teaching it, is? Isn't that really learning, what teach learning, learning to teach your audience? Yeah, learn that who's in the crowd. Right. Who are you talking to? Some people you can do that to, some people you can't. You might make one cry and the other one not, you know. And and I think I personally think you have to be an a teacher to be able to be successful at what you do. Like, like the guy we just had on. Mhm. Mm could you not listen to him all day long teaching you about guns? Oh, absolutely. He had a great presentation, he had a great delivery. And he, he made you want to go out and shoot. I mean, he had that kind of enthusiasm. And, and I can see where you have more people than you probably know what to do with that would like to sit and shoot. Because I'm sure you get, what, how many referrals? Quite a few. Yeah. Quite a few. And that's a lot. That's that's a feather in your cap. If you never got referrals, then it's like, hmm, what am I doing wrong? Because referrals are everything. Because right. people need to be comfortable. 
I really think that's whether female, because you teach males as well, right? Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah, so it's not yeah. just female. No, no, I, I don't. I, you know, I teach, I, I have uh, competitive shooters that come to me that work with me just to mm-hmm. kind of hone in their skills. I have new shooters, men, women, kids, um, seniors. I have you know, across the board. I, just don't, pistol, I don't service Just pistol one. or everything? Oh, no, I do all platforms. So rifle, shotgun, pistol. You that's take, awesome. How yeah, fun is that? You ought to take, oh, her, out, you ought to take her out to see if you we can should out, go. shoot her. I'll, I'll do her. Come on, brother. I don't want to do you. That's... <laughs> <laughs> I'll get right on that, Dave. <laughs> you notice I get right on that. Yeah, I know. No, 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 no. Depends on I don't know. Depa- <laughs> look at that look. Yeah. Isn't that a cute shade of red? Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> I had to do that. So Maybe I- sporting class. Hey, I'm gonna save you. Hey, did you know we have a world class flight training school here in San Diego? Yes. I knew you did. You're flying now, right? I'm not flying. I thought you not yet. Pilots can fly almost every day. We're close to the ocean, desert, mountains, international border, and a major military base. That's why San Diego is one of the best places to learn how to fly in the world. You can learn to fly in sunny San Diego right at Montgomery Field. Getting started is super easy. Give them a call at 858-569-1822. You can learn to fly at SDFTI. Or again, call them at 858-569-1822. All right, so we had a couple of amazing things happen in the Second Amendment world over the last couple of months, and it's resulted in uh, there, there's it's it's been a flurry of activity, including some stories that have been written. But uh, it's kind of interesting, you know. Month ago, six weeks ago, the Bruin case came out, the Supreme Court case that uh, you know affirmed that yeah, you uh, the, the right not just the right to keep, but the right to bear arms is a uh, is a uh, an individual right that everybody everybody deserves and everybody has and the government can't get cannot get in the way of so they got that got rid of good cause immediately but the other part of it was of, of this case is that is the court mandated hey this is how we have to uh this is how judges have to decide other gun cases other second amendment cases and immediately the house of representatives passed an assault weapons ban which is very much based on the assault weapons ban in California, which is essentially is nothing more than a ban on semi-automatic rifles. Uh, there's no such thing as an assault weapon. Uh, it's a made-up term. It's actually a pejorative term made up by a bunch of politicians in Sacramento. Uh, it doesn't doesn't really doesn't it's not an it's not an industry term. It doesn't have an industry meaning. Um, you know, like like when you say a, when you when you say like pickup truck, everybody knows what a pickup truck is. You can describe a pickup truck. Well. That's an industry term, but you know, assault weapon. There's no, there's no description. It's got this weird legal term that California came up with, but it's not legit. So that's that made its way through the House of Representatives. Next stop is the Senate, where it's going to die, which is exactly what it should do. Um, but if it does somehow miraculously make it through the Senate, the uh, uh, President uh, Biden, I'm sure, would sign it into law, and he'd be very happy about it. And then it'd go to the Supreme, or it'd go up through the court system and be struck down because it's absolutely. 100% unconstitutional. Now, this is interesting. A story came out. This is Breitbart uh, produced the, or at least re- republished this story. Uh, I, I guess they did. They actually wrote the story. It's A.W.R. Hawkins, who's a good buddy of ours. A.W.R. Hawkins is one of the best uh, Second Amendment uh, authors out there. And the story goes like this. Although the left has spent decades telling Americans things like, quote, an AR-15 is not for hunting, end quote, a Winchester ammunition survey reported by the NSSF, which is the National Shooting Sports Foundation, fantastic organization, shows that 60% of center fire, center fire rifle hunters use AR AK platform rifles on their hunts. That's enormous. That's an enormous number. I, I don't even I don't think I suspected it was that high. Mm-hmm. Alicia, what do you think? That that's that is that higher than you expected? <clears throat> I know, I, you know, that's about what I would expect. Yeah, sixty yeah. percent. Because usually, when you talk about a hunting rifle, you're thinking about a bolt action. Mm-hmm. You know, what, what Grandpa had hanging up over the fireplace or whatever. You know, and truly, ARs, especially, are the most popular semi-automatic platform True. out there right now when it comes to our pattern rifle. When it comes to semi-automatic, so right. it's no surprise that it's eating into the uh, market share. But I sixty percent. That's awesome. A centerfire rifle shoots a round that has a primer in the center of the shell casing. Popular centerfire rounds include a 243, 30 at 6, 30, 37 millimeter, and 300 Winchester short magnum. I wonder why they, why, why they include 300 Winchester short. Why wouldn't they just be 300 short mag? Yeah, maybe. Ultra popular hunting ri- uh, rounds used with AR platform rifles include 223, 556, 308, and 6.5 Creedmoor. The popularity of AR platform rifles has grown to such a degree 
that they can also be purchased in six uh, six point eight SPC. Um, the uh, uh, for, let's see, forty five seventy five hundred Auto Max and an untold number of other calibers by numerous manufacturers. Now, that's what anti-gun folks don't understand about an AR. They don't understand the AR pattern is really just, it's a design that you can do anything you want with. You can have any barrel length. You can have any you know configuration when it comes to the stock. You can have different magazine size. But it's really the reason it is so popular is because it's a design that works. Really quick, when speaking to, you know, you mentioned that you were surprised at being 60%. Yeah. Um, I also happen to spend a lot of time out at South Bay, mm. and there's a plethora of hunters, especially right before hunting season, that come out there. A lot of them are converting. A lot of the older guys, they're not sticking with their bold action, all of them. A lot of them are moving over to the air. It's nice. easier on the shoulder, the recoil, the kick, the accuracy. A lot of them are starting to convert. And it doesn't so weigh that's as much. That's why the correct. And that's yeah. why it just, that doesn't surprise me, that 60%. And I, they're not all 5.56, five, right? Correct. There, any basically any caliber. Any. In fact, my AR, I just bought an upper for. Uh, I it's it's five five six, but I just bought an upper for. Uh, it's also can be. Um, uh, oh no, four fifty eight SOCOM. <laughs> it's four fifty eight SOCOM. But can't you get those even in a twenty two if you wanted to? Y- yes. So I mean, it's not. You know, it's. It, I think you know, but the look is cool too. Correct. It looks way better than Those a evil rifle. Evil black rifles. <laughs> yeah, way better. But that's what they don't understand is we're talking about yeah, yeah. a collection of parts that turns into a design right. that just works. It works effectively. You can use it all kinds of different ways. So this idea that hey, they're not made for hunting. Well, it's a firearm. You can do anything you want with it. Yeah, but you see, know? but you, you, you know, it's like it's, it kills me that they have comments on weapons when they've never shot one or had anything to do with it. Well, that would make you would like making you an expert on cooking, but you've never been in the kitchen. <laughs> Very similar, <laughs> and and I I think it's a it's a it's it's a willful ignorance. Right. It's not. I, I totally agree, and I'm going to use Alec Baldwin mm-hmm. as an example because he will defend the fact that he doesn't know anything about guns. So why are you upset with me? I don't know anything about him. I've never been to a class, but yet he broke every rule in the book. But he's using his ignorance as a defense to what he did. Very true. <laughs> okay, so the, N- the back to the article. The NSSF notes Winchester Ammunition conducted a survey of 1,600 hunters and recreational shooters in the first quarter of 2022. So it's re- just just a, this just happened. This right. isn't a 10 year old study um, to better learn which firearms recreational shooters and hunters were using. Turns out the most popular selling centerfire rifle in America is the rifle of choice. Um, that rifle of choice is the AR AK platform rifle. It's wildly popular among hunters. Uh, the Winchester survey found that a centerfire rifle is the go-to rifle for hunters, and 60% of those centerfire hunters are using an AR AK platform uh, firearm. I'd imagine that out of that 60, I'd imagine the vast majority of those are probably ARs. Oh, absolutely. That's gonna be my next gun. How many? How many hundred? Really, an AR? Oh, absolutely. Oh, that's interesting. You yeah. know, you and I gotta go to have lunch and plan that out. Yeah, I, I, whole- really, I do because <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I've looked at them, I've studied it. We've got a, you know, my yeah. wife and I've got a Mossberg, and we got all these other guns. I, it's it just for my wife especially. I think an AR would be perfect. I made the mistake of buying her a nine millimeter Smith and Wesson. She can't rack it, so. Well, it's like Center never, to me. It's like you never buy your wife a Let car. Let Alicia fix it. They're they get body mechanics. Like, is that what it is? There's 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 ways around that. Get your card. Before. I I just friended you on Facebook, so we'll be buzz. So yeah. I I thought that was interesting though. I think it it kind of destroys. Were you surprised? Another, Were you surprised? Well, like I said, I was surprised that it was sixty percent, but I knew that you know, but it, and it kind of doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it kind of doesn't matter. You know, it's because you know, Second Amendment's not for hunting. You know, and second no. amendment's not for hunting. So it's so they say, hey, you know, we, we you don't need these uh, firearms because uh, you don't hunt with them. Well, number one, you're wrong. Right. People do. Sixty percent of hunters do hunt with them. Right. Number two, you're wrong because it doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter if you if you yeah. hunt with it. it. Has nothing to do with second amendment. Yeah. So here's another um, here's another uh, um, uh, article that is uh, vaguely related. Concerns grow over gun industry's accountability after CEOs tell Congress they bear no blame in mass shootings. 
Concerns over the firearms industry marketing practices and accountability grew Thursday, prompting more proposed legislation a day after chief executives of two leading gun manufacturers told Congress they bore no blame in recent mass shootings. Now, right off the bat, I just think it's interesting the way they wrote the headline. <laughs> this is uh, this is uh, MSN wrote the headline, Concerns Grow Over Gun Industry's Accountability After CEOs Tell Congress They Bear No Blame in Mass Shootings. You're surprised with that? I don't have any concerns. Are your concerns growing? No. Are, you, are, your, are your concerns growing over Ford Motor Company? Well, or Chevrolet. I've been concerned over Ford Motor Company for a long time, Dave. But you know what I'm saying? Look how many yeah. people die, you know, either in a car behind the wheel or, and nobody's going after them. But just the assertion, like the, nowhere in this article, and I'll read a little bit more of the article, but nowhere in this article do they interview, like there's not a survey. They don't, they, there's nothing that indicates no. that concerns are growing. And I'll give you a hundred bucks. That reporter has never held a gun. And you're probably right. Because that's the problem. Because you can always tell people that know nothing about what they're writing about when you read what they're writing about. You know, you can always tell. House lawmakers introduced a measure that would direct the Federal Trade Commission to investigate the gun industry's advertising and marketing practices. That's the latest. Uh, that's the latest uh, uh, strategies. They're going to go after them because of the way they market. Kind of like the way they, you know, like like they're equating it to like cigarettes. You know, yeah. advertising the kids. By the way, Alicia, he only does this to make us mad. <laughs> Normally, he wouldn't bring all this up, but he's just trying to get us both mad. So Doing a good a, job. Yeah. yeah it's so the I latest thought. attempt by so federal legislators. keep it up to it, Le Le Federal legislators <laughs> to hold gun companies responsible after the massacres in Buffalo, New York, and Uvalde, and Texas. But like other proposals making their way through Congress, including a ban on so-called assault weapons and a repeal of federal protections that largely shield gun industries from lawsuits, it faces staunch Republican opposition that will likely keep it from advancing in the Senate. I really wish that the opposition from Republicans was staunch. I would have said weak, but whatever. Yeah. I digress. You do. Now gun safety advocates <laughs> urge lawmakers <laughs> to ramp up efforts uh, after uh, gun makers double down on their lack of culpability while testifying uh, before the House Committee on, on uh, uh, Oversight and Reform. So basically, they said, hey, look, this is all your fault, gun manufacturers. And the gun manufacturers refer refuse to budge. I'm glad. So am I. Alicia, take his phone away, would you like? <laughs> reach over there and Refu grab it. Yeah, because it's <laughs> just too much trouble. Refuse to budge, which they should which, which the normal thought pattern prior to here, you would have thought they'd cave. Well, I hope not. But yeah, I mean. Well, I hope not, too. But don't you kind of think? No? I don't think so. You think they've had enough? I think they have. No. Yeah. Because we've been pushing them, or not we, but they have been pushing the gun manufacturers pretty hard now for the last couple of years, you know, saying that we're going to make you responsible. We're going to have the, you know, and I think they've just finally said, fine, we're not doing it. Get away from us. And now what are you going to do? Oh, well, we can't take you to jail. We can't take you to court. Oh, that's not going to be a good fight. Well, it's their latest tactic. Well, you they, know, they, they have a bucket load. Them. They have a bucket load of tactics, but it's not going to work. Not We're yet. going to continue to work. And this Bruin case is enormously okay. important. Uh, it's another tool. And, uh, you know, don't listen to these uh, reporters and uh, make sure that you tell people just how ridiculous these uh, articles are. All right. We're going to take a quick break because I'm exhausted. Oh, PRMI Mortgage Primaries.com slash Alpine. Hey, if you're looking to buy or refi, or if you're just considering a reverse mortgage, you need to call our local mortgage guy that you can trust. Call Chris Wiley at PRMI Mortgage. For nearly 25 years, Chris has been helping local San Diegans with all their mortgage needs. They make it easy. They work with a friendly, work with a friendly expert team that will help you get the best deal on a mortgage. Call Chris Wiley at 619-722-1303 or primaries.com slash Alpine. Okay, we have a contest winner. For the uh, last week, we had a contest. If you go to Gun Owners Radio and you sign up for the Gun Owners Radio newsletter, um, you, you get brought up to date, brought up to speed on everything that's uh, going on in the, in the Gun Owners Radio world. Um, highly encourage you to go to Gun Owners Radio right now and sign up for their newsletter. And, and again, we'll, we'll tell you all the activities that we're doing, their shows, et cetera, et cetera. So we had a contest uh, for reactionary zone targets. Is that what it is, Rich? Class, I'm sorry, reactionary. Oh, cool. Okay, reactionary. That's uh, oh yeah, Shelly, who we interviewed last week. 
So Reactionary Zones, it's an online class. Um, Shelly is extremely knowledgeable, and this class is extremely valuable. And we have a winner, Mr. Patrick Pounds. Congratulations, my friend. <laughs> Patrick Pounds, if you're listening, we're going to email you and uh, make sure that you get all the information you need to take that free class. All right, and then we're going to send you around the world, all expenses paid. <laughs> That's uh, coming out of Dave's. Uh, yeah, right. Wallet. Comes out of my. Yeah. my do, you, do you take a check? Yes. So, uh, so yeah. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about that's coming up is, uh, of course, we have an election. You know, we talk about these laws. We talk about lawmakers. We talk about you know uh, outreach and all these things. All these things that are extremely effective. And you know what what can we do? Um, well, we have an election in November. We don't have our uh, we don't have our voter guide out yet. But right now is the time to start laying groundwork. We're going to need a whole lot of volunteers. We're going to need people that really want to roll up their sleeves and do a couple of things. Not it's not hard work. Uh, one of the most effective things that we do is we have these tabletops at the gun shops, and we do it at Discount Gun Mart from time to time. You guys just had your your sidewalk sale. Is that what they call it? Correct. Yep. Yep. There's sidewalk sale. We had a booth there. Um, we need help. We need help, folks. Um, we do all kinds of important things. If you go to our website, sdcgo.org, uh, and go to the volunteer section, there are or you can sign up to mentor. You can teach people how to shoot. Um, if you're a, a woman, you can sign up to be an ambassador and help us with Not Me so that you can bring more women in uh, to the shooting sports um, and uh, all kinds of, of, of really exciting opportunities. But one that we need a lot of help with going into uh, November is our tabletops. Mm. We have tabletops every weekend, and we set it up. You don't have to set it up. We supply all the supplies. You don't have to supply any supplies. All you do is show up. And we'll tell you, we'll show you what to do. Do you get a shirt? Get a shirt. Um, essentially, what you're doing is you're giving information about the organization. Right. You're giving information that the organization um, is offering to the public. And as soon as we get our voter guide, you're going to be getting that voter guide into people's hands. But don't wait. What, what we need you to do is go sign up right now. Go to the volunteer section of sdcgo.org. What makes us different? You know, when we first started San Diego County Gun Owners, a lot of people wanted to know, well, hey, there's NRA, there's CRPA, there's GOA, there's GOC, there's this whole alphabet soup of uh, gun organizations. What makes you guys different? And there's a couple of things. Our, our, the main focus is one thing that makes us very different. We focus not on federal, not on state, but on these local boards and councils mm -hmm. that are all over the county that have a huge say in a couple of things. One, you have a huge say in, in, in your daily life. You know, it could be taxes, uh, it could be all kinds of things, but they really truly control your neighborhood, your city, your county. Um, but the other thing is they have a huge say and a lot of control in who gets to serve in Sacramento and who gets to serve in Washington, D.C. Because when somebody wants to run for the assembly, somebody wants to run for state senate or Congress, the first thing they do is they go to the folks that serve on these local boards and councils and they say, hey, I need help. Now, if we have five people on that board that we helped get elected their first question is going to be great i'll help you how are you on second amendment and if they're weak you know if they're not good eh, you know what i'm not going to help you i'm going to help the other person and and that has a very real effect on everything that we're trying to do one of the most effective ways to get information to people is just person to person you know and the more you trust the person uh the more likely you are to to listen to them so if you just send them something in the mail probably not going to pay a lot of attention to it. If you you know send them a Facebook ad or something like that, probably not going to pay a lot of attention to it. But if you're standing there face to face, if you're working at a uh, booth at a gun shop and, you know, hey, I showed up at this gun shop. Here's somebody who's also into guns. You know, I've seen this logo before. Uh, they're talking about a subject that's important to me. And they say, hey, we really need you to vote for, you know, these group of people. Or, hey, we really need you to get involved in this way. They're far more likely to get involved and do something effective. So those are the things that make us, uh, that, that's one of the things that I'm sorry, that makes us um, different is that we really have this local for, uh, uh, focus. But the other thing that, that uh, makes us different is, uh, you know, the endorsement of candidates. Now, uh, some other, you know, organizations endorse candidates. A lot of them do. NRA, CRPA. We endorse on the local level. Again, that makes us different. But, you know, and we do the education piece. We're all, we are involved in lawsuits, but so many other organizations you know, that's the part of the field where they play. They don't do the level of, of vetting that we do in order to get folks elected, which is where these horrible policies come from. 
so when we decided, you know, to, to, when, when I was designing San Diego County Gun Owners, you know, what's the most effective thing we can do? The most effective thing we can do is um, have an impact on public policy. Who makes public policy? Elected officials. So what we need you to do is, is help us get the right people elected. Um, you know, we're a political organization. We're a 527. We're not a 501c3, which is a charity. Um, you know, we're not a, uh, an association. We're a political action committee, and that means that we can endorse candidates. I, 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 we do a better job of vetting than anybody in the county. I would put the, the, our, our vetting against any organization in the county, and I think we definitely proved that when it comes to who we, we endorsed for sheriff. Um, you know, the, uh, we've been working with Kelly Martinez, our endorsed candidate, for years now. Um, you know, talked to her multiple times, uh, interviewed her, uh, made her, you know, commit to things and then follow through on them, specifically with CCW. She did a fantastic job. But then another candidate jumped in, uh, you know, and we had him on the radio and we, you know, researched him and found out that he's not just a bad candidate when it comes to uh, firearms because he was so supportive and so uh, enthusiastic when it comes to spreading gun violence restraining orders. But he was generally a bad candidate. He, he'd already, uh, you know, I would go so far as to say abused his power um, when he was working for the city attorney, found out that he's a horrible candidate. And frankly, the things that we found out, nobody else dug uh, deep enough to find. The Republican Party just, you know, elected him or just endorsed him because he was a Republican. They didn't look into his past and his history and his performance. We did. So that level of vetting and the fact that we are, uh, you know, actually endorsing candidates and we're actually vetting and endorsing candidates and then putting resources into helping them get elected is one of the things that really, really, truly makes us different. Um, and I'm very, very proud of that. And, and it's, it's also a vehicle for you, the activist, to get involved. Um, you know, when, if you thought, hey, you know, I want to do something. How I know before San Diego County Gun Owners, I would go to different meetings, different monthly meetings. And they're, uh, I'd walk in and they'd have a guest speaker and maybe some free food or something like that. That was all fantastic. But I wanted to do something. I was there to actually do something. If I walked out of a meeting and they had nothing for me to do, you know, I, I rarely went back. Or if I went back, I'd try them one more time, you know, and then that was that. We have things for you to do. We're, we're, a, we're a vehicle. We want to give you the keys and have you drive the car, um, you know. And uh, so we have programs like Shooting Socials and, and Gun Shop Tabletops and Not Me, our women's program. We have, you know, different ways to vet candidates and be involved in that. But also, if there's something you thought, hey, you know what, I've, I've been waiting for the Second Amendment community to do X, Y, and Z, great. Come to the table. You know, let us know what resources are needed, and let, let's get that. Maybe that will become a project of ours. Um, we're not looking for people to just say, hey, here's what you ought to do. We're looking for people that want to roll up their sleeves and say, hey, this is how I want to be involved, and this is what I need. Um, extremely proud of San Diego County Gun Owners and Orange County Gun Owners and Inland Empire. Uh, but we definitely need your help going into November. We need your help getting our voter guide out. We need your help uh, getting more members so that they see our voter guide. That's going to be the key to victory in November. And we have a, a ton of people we're going to endorse and get elected. Can't wait because I can't do it without your guide, to be honest with you, because you don't know 90% of the people. I know. Well, you and I got to go have breakfast and fill out your ballot when you, after you get it. You don't even cover Alpine. Well, we do. Some some parts of it, but but pizza. that's why you and I need to sit down <laughs> and I'm talk serious. about and talk about who to. No, because I'm serious. Because I mean, am I right? Am I wrong? How many people really know who's running for what? And you can't go by anything that the government sends you. No. So you know, and if you don't know, like Mike, he sleeps and drinks his stuff. Well, I'm really you know we meet with them. So so let's talk about the vetting real quick. We meet with the person. Uh, usually, the first step is to have a, a brief phone call and say, hey. Uh, fill out the questionnaire. See so you know, if they we, even answer the phone. Yeah. Well, if after Michael they answer, the, if they won't answer the phone, they're obviously not. You know. <laughs> but if they answer the phone, we say, "Hey, you know, here's who we are, what we do. Here's the questionnaire." If they don't do the questionnaire, if they can't even do the questionnaire, the they're online question, yeah, but probably not. You know. But once we get that questionnaire back, then we have a foundation. We have a platform. Okay, here's some things we want to talk to them about. You know, maybe everything is is perfectly answered except this one question. Well, I want to know why. Why don't they support us on this? Or, you know, what's their perception? You know, that sort of thing. From there, you know, we meet with them in person. We want to know who are they working with? Do they have staff? Do they have uh, do they have a campaign manager? 
How much money are they raising? How much money do they think they're going to raise? If they do raise that money, what are they going to spend that money on? Right. What kind of experience do they have that even guarantees that they're going to know what they're doing once they get into office? Right. You know, so many times uh, we'd we'd get a candidate who's you know, hey, I'm pro Second Amendment, and that's great, but they had they had no plan on how they were going to be successful. And you know, the last thing we're going to do is tell folks, hey, help this candidate out if they can't even do the things that it takes to be successful. So the first thing we check on is, are they pro Second Amendment? Mm. The second thing we check on is, are they a viable candidate? Right. And that takes a little bit of experience and a whole lot of research. The next thing we check on is, are there any character issues? Because even if they're pro Second Amendment and they have a million bucks in the bank and, and, and a staff or whatever, if they're not a good person, we're not going to tell you to support That's them. Right. And then the fourth thing is, are they effective? Right. What have they done in their careers that have shown that they're a good right. candidate? So go to the website, SDCGO. Definitely sign up to be a member. If you're not, sign somebody else up to be a member. But go to that volunteer page and check out the uh, tabletops and come help us on these tabletops. It'll be we fun. have a lot coming up over the next couple months. It'll be fun. It's always fun. All right. Don't touch that dial. Stay, Sam the gun. Uh, the gun or Sam. Sam the gun, man. Sam the gun, man. It's coming up next, and you did it again. You Gam the sun, man. We have a question. It's not in his bailiwick. He's going to be really upset you with you. You think so? Wait a minute. You don't think he's going to be able to do this one? Mm, well, he, I just told Alicia I thought he was going to nail and it. And by the way, folks, just so you'll know, for all you ladies out there, Alicia has beautiful nails. <laughs> so there's no reason why you can't come and take a class because hers look great. Just throwing it out there. Hey, do you feel safe? Are you protected? Well, it's time to take ownership of your self-defense journey. The U.S. Concealed Carry Association believes the key ingredient to being a responsible firearms owner is proper training and education. The USCCA offers comprehensive training that helps you avoid danger while keeping you and your loved ones safe. More than 650,000 responsibly armed Americans like you have made the responsible decision to take control for protecting themselves and their families. Get hands-on training from a certified instructor. Learn how to avoid danger. Defend yourself and protect your loved ones. Take responsibility for your own safety. And visit uscca.com slash G-O-R. A couple of comments came in Well, before we introduce uh, Sam the Gunman. Uh, one is, and this is exactly where I was uh, going. We kind of ran out of time, but we were talking about the gun manufacturers um, when they were in front of Congress this time, at least, you know, didn't fold and said, hey, we, we're not culpable at all. We had no responsibility. The fear was, you know, not too long ago, Remington, was just in the last couple of years, Remington uh, settled with uh, with uh, on the Sandy Hook case, even though they were immune. And, you know, that level that that settlement, uh, I felt, was was damaging to the uh, uh, to the whole thing. I mean, the, the, the gun manufacturer had absolutely nothing to do with what happened in Sandy Hook. They know they had absolutely nothing to do with what happened at Sandy Hook. And when they settle, um, and, uh, you know, that that settlement hurts. That settlement hurts everything that we're trying to do. And I was worried that they were going to fold like a cheap suit, and they didn't. And I'm very, very proud of that. Somebody asked why Kelly Martinez flipped a Democrat. I don't know. Don't care. We're not a Democrat or Republican an organization. Um, I think she flipped to being a Democrat because she wanted to be a Democrat. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter to us in any way. Nowhere on our on – our, uh, on our uh, uh, questionnaire, do we ask if they're Republicans or Democrats? When I do a report and present to the board, I don't mention whether they're Republicans or Democrats. We don't care. Um, we It doesn't matter. We found Republicans that are horribly damaging to us. We found Democrats that are uh, extremely good to us. Um, she, but my understanding is she was a Republican uh, years ago, and now she's a uh, registered Democrat. She didn't get the Democrat endorsement. She obviously didn't get the Republican uh, endorsement, but it doesn't matter to us. You know, the uh, the parties can play their dumb little games and, and do their, their silly little maneuvering all they want. Uh, we're only interested in the Second Amendment. I don't care where they stand on other issues. I don't care who they contribute to. I don't care who they donate to. What I'm looking for is real proof and evidence that they're pro-Second Amendment. I'm not just looking for lip service. I'm looking to make sure that they put their money where their mouth is, and then I hold them accountable. I've been stabbed in the back by multiple Republicans, and I've been supported by multiple Democrats, and I've been you know, called names by Democrats, and I've been uh, uh, supported by, uh, by Republicans. It just doesn't matter. Those, these, these political parties are meaningless. They're useless, and I, my recommendation is get out of there. If you're a registered Republican, unregistered. Don't give them any money. 
you're a registered Democrat, same thing. Get out of there. Just stand for your principles, neither party's principle. Thank you for the question. Okay, so we are uh, going to our very uh, favorite segment, our uh, most popular segment, and that is Stump My Nephew, where uh, if you send in a uh, question that has to do with gun trivia, we will, and if we read it on the air, we'll send you a hat or a shirt, whichever you prefer. And if you stump my nephew with that question, then we'll give you a very, very special prize. Um, found out years ago that my nephew Sam is, uh, he's now 22 years old. We found out a few years ago, I think he was 19, 18, 19, something mm -hmm. like that. We found out that he was really, really good at gun trivia. So every week we have him on, and uh, very rarely is he stumped. So how you doing, Sam? I'm all right. How are you guys? Fantastic. Doing really well. Are you uh, – Dave's a little worried. Dave's not sure you're going to be able uh, to answer this question. Because it's in the it's in the era you're not comfortable with. <laughs> I think I think you're going to nail it. I don't know the answer. Uh, I would, but this is uh, – Alicia's never heard you before, so no pressure. But uh, yeah. Alicia – got to impress Alicia, all right? But she heard good things. She heard very good things. Very good things. All right, I'll give it a try. See what I can do. <laughs> Alicia, you want to ask the question? Sure. All Ju right. Junior from? Junior from Los Angeles. Yep. And your question is, what is a Velo Dog Revolver? Junior from Los Angeles. What is a Velo Dog Revolver? Thanks very much for writing in, Junior. Um, Velo Dog refers to the firearm as well as the round that was developed in conjunction with it. Um, it was a uh, small caliber and, for the time, high-velocity um, revolver. I, I couldn't give you performance numbers on the, the round, but um, if I remember correctly, the revolver was supposed to be carried and advertised for use um, for cyclists for defense against um, wild dogs attacking them uh, in, in rural areas. And so it was designed basically for defense against uh, small wild animals <laughs> a poodle is a wild animal. small woodland creatures yes how do you all right how so do you, yeah well, how do you, before we get into it alicia do you want to read the uh, the answer they provided sure. sure in the late 19th century france the bicycle or velocity velocipede as it was called then came into fashion and dogs discovered that it was a great sport chasing after cyclists and biting their legs or trousers the answer to the problem was the Velo Dog revolver. The invention of one Rene Galland is it was a small double action pocket revolver with a shrouded hammer and in later models a long guardless trigger. Yep. Awesome. Damn. Also also called Revolver de Pouche <laughs> or Pocket Revolver. It was just the answer for pesky poodles and their ilk. Velo Dog ammo was a center fire five point seven five millimeter round that was loaded with a conventional bullet or uh, cayenne pepper or dust or bullets made from wax, wood, or cork. So there you go. You nailed it, man. Unbelievable. How do you know that? <laughs> um, I, I'm going to tell you the answer I always give you when you the, ask me that. The answer. I don't know. I saw it somewhere, and it it's just stuck. Sort of stuck there in the Rolo deck. That's so, why you uh, have me on after all. Alicia was asking, like, you know, do you study this stuff or like how do you, you know? And I think I think the guy's just a sponge. I think he just picks all this stuff up and never forgets it. Hey, Brendan. Yeah. Where's the congratulations? Oh yeah, I need it. Correct. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's better. Get with the job. Would you really? Jeez. You Excellent. That's you. There you go. And they're taking a nap. I know. Well, he's eating. <laughs> all right. Well, yeah, so. Um that's awesome, man. Congratulations. Totally. So how much time do you spend? If you had to, like, where do you get most of your information on firearms? Well, it's a, it depends on the topic. Um, if, it's, if it's something sort of obscure and on its own like that, then as I said, it just sticks in there. And mm -hmm. then when you ask the question, I go, oh, yeah, I remember hearing about that or reading about that. If it's something mm -hmm. on a topic that I, uh, if, if it's, if it's something on a, a more complex topic where there's a lot more literature on it, um, then it will usually be something that I have picked up in the course of more extensive research to try and uncover the whole story behind uh, why why some firearm is the way it is. Um, so something like when, when you ask weird questions about the M16, like I wrote an article about that. So I had to do a lot of research for that. So that's where that comes from. So. So, Sam, I, I just a better question, I think, that'll understand where Mike was going was, 
I mean, like every day, do you pick up different periodicals, different books that you read throughout the day, you know, whether you're relaxing or at work or on your lunch hour? Like me, I read nothing but automotive. If it's not automotive, I probably don't read it. So are you constantly researching and reading books and, and reading articles that pertain to the gun industry kind of on a regular basis? Uh, you, you, you might be surprised to hear not really. <laughs> Usually it's um, I'll, I'll have some, some books lined up where um, – I'll, like I'll bring one into work sometimes, right. and if it's a particularly slow day, I'll, I'll leaf through a magazine or whatever. But uh, a lot of the time, it is because I'm I'm doing intensive research on that topic for the art uh, for maybe an article. So for maybe an article for the magazine you write for. Yeah, yeah. That, you know that just ruined my whole concept. Oh. He doesn't even hardly study I and know. he answers the questions. No, he's ridiculous. I could see it if he was. You know, reading constantly and tearing through old magazines and, you know, sweating it out for six days, getting ready for tonight. Yeah. Well, the thing is, there's there's an unbelievable level of depth on every weird, obscure topic in in yeah. the world of firearms. It's such a complex area that uh, on even on Stump My Nephew, we've barely scratched the surface of, of all the weird, obscure stuff there is. Well, that's Isn't only because funny? you know. Oh, I think. Like, what do you think of this segment, Alicia? Oh, I love it. I know. It's Isn't it funny, amazing? Isn't it? Yeah. It'll oh, yeah. make you listen every week, huh? I, he, I, I think Sam stole some of my sponge because that's maybe that's why I can't retain it. <laughs> <laughs> he, I love it. He, he did. He wrote an article for Leatherneck Magazine. He's uh, published on the uh, on the M16, and then also on the four articles for Leatherneck. Yep. Yeah, also on the uh, on the what the the Grand. Um, yeah, I wrote one about the uh, development of the phonetic alphabet. I wrote one on the M1. I wrote one on the M16. And um, I just wrote a piece reporting from the Modern Day Marine Trade Show. You were supposed to correct my pronunciation of Garand. Oh, he's given up on you. Yeah. Actually, it's pronounced Garand. Did you know that? Oh, I did not. Yeah. Ooh. It's one well, of the he, things that Sam uncovered. Okay. He's being polite because you're here, Alicia. Right. I am? Not you. No. Sam. I'm not polite. I know. Yeah. Sam is. So yeah, so we're we're thinking about coming up with T-shirts that say the T-shirt will say actually it's pronounced Garand. Yeah. Or is that nice and obnoxious? Or <laughs> I like it? I beat Sam the Gunman. <laughs> I that, like the it's pronounced Garand one because it's got more mass appeal in the gun world. You could you could probably sell those online to all fifty states. There you go. There you go. All right, buddy. Job, thanks Sam. a million. Have a great week, and we will be talking to you, folks. Hey, subscribe to our show. Give us a five-star review. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify. And go check out all our sponsors, San Diego County, Orange County, Inland Empire County, the Dillon Law Group, PRMI Mortgage, Sage Street Digital, CL1, Leo Hamill Fine Jewelry, San Diego Flight Training International, and our newest partner, U.S. Concealed Carry Association. Can't do it without Michael Schwartz and Brendan Thomas and the rest of the backyard crew. Right here. And of course, our today's guest. What's her name? Alicia Curtin. <laughs> hey, Bob Siegel's around the corner. You touch that dial, he'll break your arm. Right here on FM 961 AM 1170. The answer.